Neutrinos are unimaginably light particles that are everywhere, all around us, but hardly interact with anything at all. Trillions of them zip through open space, our bodies, entire planets, disturbing almost nothing in their wake. They are at least four million times lighter than the electron. You will never see one, and you will never feel one. So how does anyone know they're there? The story begins in the early 1900s. Physicists had a bit of a problem. They'd observed how certain atoms emit electrons, a process called beta decay. This was a new type of decay, and it had a unique problem. In alpha decay and gamma decay, when a particle is emitted, it has a definite, predictable amount of energy. The energy lost by the atom all goes into the particle, so no energy goes missing. That's just basic conservation of energy. But the electron emitted in beta decay did not have a predictable amount of energy. Some of the energy wasn't being carried off by the electron, it was just... lost. Beta decay seemed to violate conservation of energy, one of the most important laws of physics. What was happening? Was it possible the foundation of physics was just... wrong? Wolfgang Pauli didn't think so. In 1930, he proposed that beta decay produced another particle, an incredibly light, electrically neutral particle which would take the missing energy and carry it off undetected. That particle is what we now call the neutrino. This solution was simple, clean, and best of all, didn't break physics. There's only one problem, but Pauli knew it was a big one. He famously said, I've done a terrible thing. I've postulated a particle that cannot be detected. The neutrino was a handy explanation for beta decay, but unless an actual experiment could produce physical evidence of its existence, it was nothing more than a fairy tale. And Pauli knew the neutrino had to be tricky to detect, or physicists would have seen it already. And what experiment could detect a particle that so rarely interacts with anything at all? Jump ahead 20 years. Clyde Cohen and Frederick Raines were physicists at Los Alamos, where the H-bomb was being tested. Cohen and Raines knew that if neutrinos were real, then the bomb's explosion should produce lots and lots of anti-neutrinos. Anti-neutrinos are neutrinos' antiparticles, so finding them is just as good as finding neutrinos themselves. Cohen and Raines' plan was to design an apparatus sensitive enough to detect the anti-neutrinos from the blast, but sturdy enough to live to tell the tale. At least, that was their plan until the head of their division looked at it. He supported the effort, but he pointed out they might want to use a nuclear reactor instead, which should also produce anti-neutrinos and, after all, doesn't explode. So Cohen and Raines had a source. A nuclear reactor in South Carolina which should emit trillions of anti-neutrinos per second. But the question remains, how do you detect these unreactive particles? It turns out, a little bit indirectly. Cohen and Raines knew that if the anti-neutrinos were really there, then when they pass through water, there is a very small probability that one of them could smack into a proton, producing a neutron and a positron. And those we can detect pretty easily. Positrons quickly collide with electrons and annihilate, meaning both particles are destroyed, leaving behind just photons. Neutrons could be detected using cadmium. Cadmium-108 loves absorbing neutrons. It'll absorb a neutron, become excited, and then also emit a photon. And photons are just light, which we're good at seeing. So, next to the nuclear reactor, they set up a large tank of 200 liters of water with some cadmium dissolved in it. Then they waited for the distinctive flash of light that would mean they'd found an anti-neutrino. The reactor theoretically emitted trillions of anti-neutrinos per second. After three months of data collection, they had seen only three anti-neutrinos per hour. But that's enough. In 1956, Cohen and Raines sent a telegram to Pauli, informing him that his undetectable particle had finally been detected. Pauli and a few of his friends celebrated over a case of champagne. Since then, people have continued to build bigger and better neutrino detectors. Since neutrinos can fly through the universe undisturbed for billions of years, they're very useful for learning about our cosmological past. But what's amazing about all this is how we know neutrinos are there at all. You will never see one, and you will never feel one, but clever guesses and inferences led us to believe they're out there. And with these giant tanks of water, we can peek into their tiny world and sometimes catch a glimpse of a neutrino shadow. So, thanks for watching.